All right, for our next class, we are going to be doing a metallic surface. There are all kinds of videos you can watch on how to do shading. This is going to be very similar to doing just a plain ball. Let's say it's a matte plastic ball or something like that. Um, the big difference between doing something like that versus doing something like a shiny metallic texture is the sharpness between your uh, your shades and your shadowing. So I'm going to draw myself a light source. So let's say that's the sun. And this is where the light is hitting. Hopefully that comes up. I'll draw it a little bit darker. You don't want to draw this dark. You want to be able to erase it. But I'm drawing it darker just so the video will show it. And there's the light shining on my ball. Now, there are three different kinds of shading. You got this upper area here that goes from what, basically these rays that are coming off of my light source. This is an area up here that's going to be predominantly all white. Then you have another area that's around about in here that's going to be your mid-tone grays. And then something down around here is where you are going to have uh, your darkest darks. Because there wouldn't be any light hitting here. But let's assume that our ball is on a surface. That it's not just floating in the air. Because it's metallic and to give it that further metallic look. We need to have reflections. And they need to be sharp reflections. So basically around this edge here. That area is going to be white by the time I'm done because it's reflecting the surface down here, which is going to be a little bit lighter than the underside of this ball. It won't be pitch black. Um, the only part of the under area that's going to be pitch black is going to be pretty much right around in here on this surface. And then it gets lighter and to reflect that, pun intended, um, the underside of your ball here where this ref the uh, reflection is, that is also going to be dark. And your reflection really starts about over here. Alright, so to get this started, I really don't have to do a whole lot with up here. Now, keep in mind, again, this is a ball. And in order to keep that round shape or that shape of whatever it is that you're drawing, you want to show its surface or what its surface shape is like with your lines. So I'm going to go ahead and do this darkest area, especially around the reflective surface here. So that way it will, I won't forget about it and accidentally color over the top of it. That happens. And when it comes to your first area, you are going to want this to be uniform. And even though I am filling in this whole area here with some shorter lines, in order to keep from having that like dicey look that sometimes happens when you're filling in, you're going to kind of have to come in at several angles to make sure it is a nice and smooth surface. And I want this whole dark area to be a nice uniform darkness. Now that that's all in, just to define that this is a reflection, I'm going to come in with this dark color just a little bit, not a whole lot. This will help with adding that, uh, that sense of reflectiveness and that metallic-iness. I'm going to just sharpen this up since my pencil got nice and sharp from filling in everything. I'm just going to sharpen that up just a tiny bit. Now I'm going to sharpen up and make this line of this curved area nice and smooth. Smoothness is going to be key for metallics. 
Now I'm going to just darken this area in a little bit. I am going to leave kind of like this light white line. A little bit. It, it'll be a little bit gray. And it might not show up on the camera very well. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and darken in this dark area that's on the table surface. But I'm going to leave a little area that's a little bit lighter so that way you can tell the difference between the ball and the surface that it's sitting on. Alright, now that that is done, I'm going to come in again in this next area. And I'm going to do the next layer of darkness. Now this is going to be a mid-tone, so it's going to be 50% white, 50% black. All right, now here's where a large part of the key of doing metallics comes in. This part I'm leaving white. And I want to get rid of my lines here a little bit. Now, metallics, obviously, they're going to reflect a surface, uh, you know, that's around it. So part of doing the reflections... If you don't have reflections that you're specifically drawing, you're just putting metallic on metallic. Uh, like, for instance, what I mean by that is like animes where you got these giant robots and they got metallic um, surfaces, but they're not necessarily reflecting the trees or the woods around them, the, the galaxies and what have you, if they're in space. They will have these sharp, pointy areas where the colors will mix and basically kind of act like stripes a little bit and you can have them be sharp or you can have them round out so I'm gonna round this end out here and they can be oddly shaped they can be blobby shaped what have you usually though they are long in nature like so and I'm going to bring this one up and kind of go over the top of the other one. And I'm going to leave this one pointy. And I'll do the same thing up here, just in this color instead, the 50-50. Now round this out, come back round. And this little corner is just not quite extreme enough, so I'm going to erase it, and that looks a lot better. And now I'm going to come in and put a shine. Although this area got a little dark, so I'm going to pat it down to bring, make it a little lighter and take off some of that pencil mark. So we've got a pretty good surface going on here. Now, as far as a light or a shine to it, I'm going to put it on this side because putting it up here is, um, it, it's just not going to stand out very well because a light shine is a bright white section where light is hitting it. Maybe light off to the side or a window is hitting this ball. I think I want to just lighten, make this a little smaller. There we go. Uh, maybe a window off to the side is hitting the ball and causing this shine. With metallics, there's never just one specific area that is uh, a light source. So, come in here with my eraser. Cause a nice light area. Now, because this is a little bit more square, I gotta remember that anything that's a line going this way still needs to be curved. It can't be straight. And to help again with the more metallic-y effect, going over these darker areas, probably planning them out a little bit ahead of time first would be even better. But if you didn't push too hard, and you can still erase... Now 
There we go. And go back in and just firm up these lines to make them look good still. And I think I'll go ahead and make this shine just match up with this little line I've got going on here. I'll take this out. And there we go. And you can take this far more extreme. If you like, you put a few more lines in. The only thing is you got to watch out for uh, a lot of these lines that you put in these darker areas to give it that more metallic-y look. Uh, you put in too many, you're going to end up with a, um, a tiger stripe feel. And there we have it. Uh, keep in mind that the eraser is as much of a tool as it is a way to... Most people think of an eraser as a way to erase your mistakes. An eraser is also a way to make marks on your page. For instance, being able to erase to create this light source or this feeling of light right here. And you can also plan ahead, but sometimes, you know, you come up with ideas after the fact. An eraser is there to help you with whatever you need to do. And sometimes if it's a way to put white lines in a dark area, then that's its job for that particular moment. I hope you guys like this video and I hope you have a good one. Bye.